Hey, how you doing, everyone? Good afternoon. Um, it's nice to be here. Is it nice to be here for you guys? Yeah. Uh, good, thank you. So my name is JD. Um, I'm actually a monk. I've been a monk for 10 years, and um, I'm very excited to be here. Uh, when I finished my monk training, my teacher told me that I was very fortunate because I had an opportunity to learn from great teachers and some great wisdom. So he just told me that whatever you've learned, you should share it. So today, I'm very fortunate that I can be here and share some wonderful incidents that's happened in my life and hoping that I can help you as well. So today's session, I titled it as, There is no such thing as negativity, a monk's perspective. Now this is a bit of an interesting title because we go through negativities all the time in life, correct? Right, but I was told I need a catchy title so when this video goes up, there'll be more views. <laughs> and um, hence that title. So, so bear with me. Uh, today's story, I'm going to start off with a gift. How many of you like here receiving gifts? Do you like gifts? Yeah. yeah? Gifts are good, right? Makes you feel good. Makes you feel happy. There's meaning. It, it develops relationships. You know, and most importantly, some gifts are there to teach us lessons in life. And what I want to do is I want to share with you the best gift I received uh, almost two years ago. This gift did some amazing things for me. It helped me actually appreciate life more. I was more grateful. Um, it helped me give a broader perspective of what life is all about. I became more compassionate, more empathetic. Um, I was more determined to achieve my goals. You know? And uh, most importantly, it's, it's not a big gift. It's quite small. It doesn't cost much. You know? And it did some good stuff. Is this something you want? Is this a gift that you'd like to try out? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. All right. So let me share with you the gift I received was this. This, believe it or not, is actually a scan. Um, it's a scan of my colon. And what you see is actually a tumor. So 24th of Jan, 2017, I vividly remembered, I remember walking into my doctor's office. He sat me down, gave me a glass of water, and he told me, JD, I'm sorry, but we've got some bad news. Uh, unfortunately, you've been diagnosed with stage three colon cancer. Now, he explained me the details. He told me that actually the cancer that you have colon cancer, generally nine out of 10 people get it from the age above 60. So I guess I was a lucky one, you know? And he said, just to make things even complicated, he goes, you're also diagnosed with tuberculosis, okay? This was me um, just before my surgery. I look happy, don't I? The reason is because I never knew I would look so cool in a hospital gown. <laughs> and, um, and also it gives me a bit of a change of um, attire. Generally we wear orange uh, cloth like this. So this is a bit um, different. This is me after surgery. I look happy here as well, isn't it? The reason why is, can you see the blue switch? I don't know if you can see it. When I press that switch, it releases morphine. <laughs> and um, believe it or not, this is the only time a monk is legally allowed to take any form of intoxicant. So I was high, but, um, <laughs> and I was really happy. Apparently, after my surgery, apparently, I told one of the nurses that she looks very beautiful. And I'm not the sort of person that would just flirt with anyone. I'm a monk, remember that. <laughs> you know? um, so this is me after surgery. So after, I got, after surgery, it took me two months to recover. And my, my doctors then told me the procedure. I had to go through six months of intense chemotherapy and had to pop about 30 pills every single day to, to overcome. You know, the, the, it was part of the treatment. And then after six months, it was an intense, exhausting experience. I then spent the next six months actually recovering. So I rebuilt my strength, I had strict diet, I even went to India to learn yoga and become a yoga teacher. After six months, I was feeling on top of the world. I feel like, you know, I went through cancer, I'm back to normal, I feel strong. Story gets better. I did the next scan. And the next scan, it was discovered that the tumor had spread to my liver. They found two, two more lumps in my liver, and um, they said, you're gonna have to go for another surgery. And I'll be honest with you, you know what's the first thought that came to my mind when I, it got relapsed? More morphine time. <laughs> Seriously, I'm not a drug addict, by the way, just to clarify. <laughs> but it was an interesting uh, first thing that came. But of course, afterwards, when the situation settled, I could understand the gravity of it. This is me. Uh, so this is a chemo session. This is in chemo ward. The red bag you see is actually the chemical that they inject you intravenously. Um, so you're there, and at the end, you're finished. Okay, um, I wasn't on morphine then, by the way. <laughs> um, this is me when I got uh, diagnosed with um, 
you know, when the cancer got spread to my liver. And this was a very intense surgery because they had to make many insertions, inc incisions in my body, and it was very painful. And believe it or not, I actually got a C-section. They gave me cesarean to remove my liver, half of my liver. It regenerates, it's not so bad. You know, so I had to go through the whole cycle again. I had to start chemotherapy again. Um, I had to, you know, they said, we'll give you eight cycles of chemo again. After six cycles, the story gets better. Um, apparently, the cancer spread to my lungs, apparently. So they said that we're gonna give you indefinite chemo till further test. So why am I telling you all this? The reason why I'm telling you all this, by the way, this is my gift. You still want this gift? No, I don't think so. You know, so the reason why I'm telling you is when this happened, I did not see this as a gift. In fact, I went through a roller coaster of negative emotions, okay? And, um, and the emotions I went through was fear. That's one of the biggest emotions cancer patients go through. And actually, it's not fear of death. It is actually fear of what? Of the unknown, okay? You know, cancer patients, when they go through scans, they go through something called scanxiety, you know, because when you actually do a scan, you have to wait for two weeks just to find out what the result was. And that two weeks seems like a long time. There was fear, there was anxiety, there was stress, depression. I had no idea what depression was, but this experience gave me a glimpse of what depression was. And it was not a nice feeling. There's loss of um, low self-esteem. Um, you know, there was also like, you know, your sad mood swings. You name it, all the negative experience I went through. Now, do you guys go through these emotions in your day-to-day -day life? Yeah? We do, everyone goes through this. The point is you don't have to go through cancer to go through these emotions. These emotions are universal, everyone goes through it. And therefore it's very important to learn the science to deal with these negative emotions and make it very digestible. Because if we don't, it becomes, life becomes very miserable. So how did I overcome these negative emotions? So there's so many information and knowledge out there that teaches you how to overcome negativity. But I decided to choose wisdom from the Eastern tradition. So I come to the school of bhakti yoga tradition. And in bhakti yoga, we actually take wisdom from an ancient book called the Bhagavad Gita. It is a very fascinating book because it teaches you universal principles by which you can learn how to deal with life's challenges. And this is a very fascinating book. It's a book, it's actually a conversation between two personalities. They're two great warriors, Krishna and Arjuna, and they're having a conversation and the gist of the conversation in this book is this, that whatever we do in life, however we perceive things in life, however we react in life, it's all dependent on the state of our consciousness. The higher our consciousness, the more in tune we are with reality, the more you have access to real happiness, right? And most importantly, you actually become immune to negativities of this world, you know? And therefore, there's so many principles this book teaches you, and I took three principles that really helped me to deal with my negativity. And I call it the three pillars. I call it the ABC pillars. These are the three things that help me elevate my consciousness and help me actually become detached from the external negative situation. So what are these three principles? The first one is association. I think association is so key in our lives. They say your consciousness is the average of five people you hang around the most, okay? People affect the way you think. People affect the way you behave and how you react. And when I was in this situation, I had to really be careful who I hang around with. One of the biggest problems cancer patients go through is loneliness. And loneliness is actually a very dangerous place to be in because through loneliness, all the other disease come about. And they say that, you know, the effect of loneliness is same as taking 15 cigarettes a day, you know? And the only way you can come out of it is having a powerful association. I heard this one very beautiful analogy, and the analogy is like this. Once a teacher um, bought a student in front of the class, and the teacher asked the student to hold a cup of glass. And then the teacher asked the students, how much does this glass, how much does this weigh? So everyone started guessing, two ounce, four, six, eight. Teacher says, no, you're all wrong. The question is not how much does it weigh, the question is how long are you gonna hold on to it? The glass, uh, the cup actually represents all the negativities that we have in life. When you think about it for a few seconds, it's okay, no problem. When you hold on to it for longer, you get aches. And if you hold on for a few days, you're gonna get paralyzed. 
And this is how negative emotions are like. We have to let go of them. And that's what good association lets you do. They teach you how to let go. And that's what happened to me. I was surrounded by great friends, great families. I had great support system. And they really helped me deal with all these negativities. So association is very key. The second one is balanced mind. Cancer is a battle I had to fight. So it's a war I had to fight. But to win this war, I had to win many, many battles, right? And this is where the mind comes into play. In the Bhagavad Gita, it's explained the mind can be your best friend or your worst enemy. It's how you train the mind, okay? And the mind determines whether our consciousness gets elevated or it gets degraded. And one of the most effective way I found um, overcoming the anxieties of the mind was meditation. We hear a lot about meditation and it works. After my surgery, um, I'll be honest with you, I didn't take so much morphine because I knew the side effects. So I, need, I had to come with an alternative to deal with the anxiety. So when I, after my surgery, I would use breathing techniques and breathing meditation to deal with my physical pain. And I would do mantra meditation to deal with my mental anxieties. And mantra meditation is very powerful. It uses sacred sounds and it actually has a powerful state, an alteration of state of your consciousness. So one of the popular mantras that I found very effective was called the Maha Mantra, or is known as the Hare Krishna Mantra. This is a very simple mantra, consists of three words, and by vibrating it, you can see your consciousness being elevated and transcending whatever situation you're in. You know, um, and, and the example that I often give is of this. Like, in London, do you know what's the tallest building you find in London? The Shard. If we're standing in front of the Shards, how big, and I ask you, how big is this building, what would you say? It's quite big, isn't it? Now imagine you're looking at the same building from a plane. What would you say, how big is the building? It's tiny. Similarly, the building represents our problems and challenges. What's changed is your perception, your consciousness. When we raise our consciousness, our problem become very insignificant, and that's the effect of meditation. And so that was very effective and really helped me during this whole process. And last but not least, probably the most effective technique that really helped me is contribution. In the Bhagavad Gita, it's mentioned that if you want to control your mind, you need to train your mind to think about how to do good for others. When I meet many cancer patients, I feel very sad. The reason why is because when I look at the way that they're dealing with the situation, it's not so great. When I, after chemotherapy, I would actually go home to mom. Mom is cooking, she looks after me. But a lot of cancer patients I met, they would do everything on their own. They had no one to help them out. There's no support system, nothing. And therefore, I felt very sad, very compassionate. I thought, you know what? How are these guys dealing with it? How are they coping with it? And most of them are not. So then I decided that I need to give back. I had such great, wonderful facilities, and I thought I should give back. And this is why I actually um, opened up a charity. Right now, it's called JD's Cancer Fund, but I'm thinking of a better name, but this is what it's called right now. Okay, and the idea of this fund, this is what we do. So this is a monastery I live in, in Watford. It's in Hertfordshire. Um, it's a beautiful monastery, 70-acre land is donated by George Harrison from the Beatles. By the way, you're all welcome to come. You know, we'll go for lunch or something, so um, please do come. This retreat, believe it or not, is actually a retreat center. And what we do is we actually provide customized well-being retreat for people from all walks of life. This is a retreat I did very recently. It was a corporate retreat. And this retreat consisted of looking after every single aspect of your being. So we look after your physical aspect, your mental, social and emotional, and most importantly, spiritual. So it's a day of yoga, meditation, different workshops from different experts in different fields. And most importantly, this is where we actually develop genuine relationships. And this retreat, when I did um, for the corporate, we raised about 1,500 pounds. And then I used this money to do the same retreat for the cancer community. And when I did this, one of the Macmillan nurses told me that what you provided here is exactly what cancer patient needs. And that gave me encouragement to expand and scale up. So what's the take home message? My message is very simple, that life is not easy. There's loads of challenges. But if we raise our consciousness, then what happens is that every single moment and experience you go through in life becomes a beautiful gift. And actually, we can grow from that. So right now, um, that's my attitude right now. I'm trying to build my life with these three pillars and trying to raise my consciousness at every aspect. My scan results are going to come through very soon from, from my, next, my previous scan. 
And, you know, I think I'm ready mentally. I'm stable in terms of it doesn't matter what the result is. Um, every opportunity now I'm seeing is an adventure. I'm seeing it as an opportunity for growth. And most importantly, I'm seeing it as an opportunity to give back to society. And I want to leave you guys with one powerful quote um, which had a powerful impact. In life, when something bad happens to you, you have three choices. You can either let it define you, you can either let it destroy you, or most importantly, you can let it strengthen you. I want to thank you for your time. I hope that was useful. I'll speak to you soon.